All right, take two. I touched something and it messed the lighting up on my screen. So I just want to do a quick video talking about the other F word, my other favorite F word. Um, I don't use the other one too often because I just don't want to offend people and I have a little person. Um, we're talking about fasting. So I want to lay to rest to any friends, relatives, or people that follow me, any concern that fasting is bad, that I'm doing something wrong or harmful. Far from the truth. Do your research, please. Um, I definitely eat balanced amounts. So when I fast, I fast. When I feast, I feast. I don't play around with that anymore. If I set a time, my fasting hours are anywhere from 16 to 24 hours. On average, 18 to 20, period, every day. Now, as you saw, if you saw my video on Facebook Live, I think it was at the beginning of the week, in my mind, Jimmy Moore was starting a fasting group, a seven-day fasting group, water salt only with electrolytes. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do it. Yeah. When you get getting ready to, whether you're ovulating as a female or you're getting ready to get go into your cycle, that's stress, exercise stress, kids stress. There's, there's a lot of different stressors. So I'm like, in my mind, I want to do it, but my body's telling me not to. So I'm just, I didn't do it. I didn't do even get into like 24 hours. I think I only fasted like 18 or 19 hours before I broke it with my usual. So remember, <clears throat> understand fasting and that you need to take periods of time to allow your digestive system to rest, especially if you're having digestive issues, okay? If you have inflammation of the gut, if you eat foods or you think you have acid reflux or anything like that, that's a problem. You need to quit eating, number one, the foods that are causing it and eat the right foods, quit drinking alcohol, quit drinking the wine, quit eating copious amounts of processed products and sugars and things like that, okay? There's not this um, cheat day or um, I'm going out. You need to really, if you have health problems, if you have weight problems, you need to make a choice on how you want to handle that. So I do fasting, not for weight loss, even though I have definitely a few pounds that could be gone of fat weight. I do it for health purposes. Like I've said before, many people I talk to, it's for health reasons, and you should not fast for weight loss, okay? Understand that, number one. Number two, eat lots of fat. Get your body understanding that you want to use fat for fuel and not glucose because more than 90%, um, 95% of you or standard Americans are glucose burners. So if you're a glucose burner and you try to fast, it's not impossible, but very challenging. Females, definitely a little bit more challenging. Why is it a little bit more challenging than female for females? Well, men have hormone fluctuations, yes. We all have hormone fluctuations. Females, we tend to have more because we have cycles, because we're built to carry babies and make babies and things like that, okay? So you might get one or two good weeks out of the month where your hormones aren't surging, like you ovulate, your hormones are gonna surge and drop. You get ready to start your period, your hormones are gonna surge and drop. And usually your good time is like, in the middle of your cycle coming out of it and maybe the week after that before the cycle starts all over again so my own personal experience with fasting especially intermittent fasting and even attempts at longer fasts that they have to be planned properly because i know when i my hormones start fluctuating i'm wanting more calories but the calories that i'm eating are not carbohydrates they're fat their nuts, their seeds, their vegetables, etc. Okay, you need to understand how your body works, and you cannot do that when you're constantly shoving food and drink into your mouth. People, you need to let your body rest. I always recommend for people that are interested in intermittent fasting, go 12 hours without food or drink, water only. 14's better. 16's even better than that. Okay, you really, really need to reevaluate that, especially if you have health problems. Again, weight problems. Again, fasting is not for weight loss. It'll come with the territory. But if you are overweight, blood glucose problems, um, autoimmune issues, any of those things, even, even starting out intermittent fasting can be very, very beneficial. Very beneficial. Okay? Now, extended fasting. You've seen me post a few times in my mind, I want to start an extended fast. But when I make that decision, it always seems to be around surges in my hormones. And my hormones get the best of me, as I say. Okay, and as a female, I'm really, really becoming intuitive 
with changing my protocols and what works and what's not working, when I need to eat more, when I tend to not eat less. Again, seasons are changing, so that makes a huge difference too with appetite and um, the types of foods that you want more and things like that. So in the winter, you wanna eat more dense, warm foods, summer, spring, you wanna eat more cooler, um, fresh type of foods, okay? So any anything that people have concerned, um, I believe me, it's a balance. So I, I, it seems like I might be fasting a lot. I do it for health purposes. I'm not starving people. If I'm hungry, like truly hungry, a lot of people do not know, do not know what true hunger feels like, okay? You don't know that. Usually it's an electrolyte imbalance, a salt imbalance, and a water imbalance. So you're dehydrated and you're depleted in minerals, salt, and water. Okay, usually, and, and, and just following the group that is doing this extended fast with Jimmy Moore, you definitely hear that after day two, day three, there's no true hunger. It's usually if you do a little salt, a little electrolytes and some water, you're fine. Now, if you were to go on for hours like that and you're still getting that hunger, then yeah, you may need to break your fast. So I think my goal now is after my cycle is finished, which it hasn't come yet because it's, it's, it's coming, just don't know when, soon um then i think i might get start my quarterly extended fast so i may attempt maybe three times a year or four times a year every three to four months attempt a three to five day extended fast again i say this now that's a goal i may not be able to do that not everyone is built to fast that long i can easily fast 24 hours if i really want to and it's not around my cycle or my ovulation. Okay, no big deal. I can go 20 hours, 22 hours. I've gone 24, I've gone 30, etc. And again, it depends on stress and activity. And because I'm going to be teaching, I taught Monday, I'm teaching this Saturday, and I'm teaching two classes on Monday, not a smart time to try to do any fasting. So maybe towards the end of next week, I can say, hey, all right, if everything falls into place or the week after, somewhere in there, let's try a three-day. We'll start with 24 hours and then say, okay, three days, five days. I, ideally, three days is where I want to go to get into that autophagy. Now, for people that think that when you're not eating, you're starving, you're wrong. Now, when you're a fat burner, your body is, when if it's trained properly, your body will be feasting on your body fat. It will go into autophagy. Okay, if you don't know what autophagy is, please look it up. Autophagy or autophagy, it depends on who you're talking to and how it's pronounced. Your body will go in and clean up dead cells, old protein cells, things that are keeping you sick, things that get buried in our joints, arthritis, things like that. Those things, Piper, um, those things need to be cleaned out. So by, you can't get that true, you can get some benefits by intermittent fasting a little bit longer, but the true effects come to about day three when you've completely, completely depleted glycogen, glycogen stores, okay? Even if you're eating high fat, low carbohydrate, moderate protein, you're still going to have some glucose stored up, okay, floating around. So usually about day three is usually what's showing that those are depleted. Your body's making ketones, aka ketones or body fat. So if you have fat on your organs or if you have um, visual fat on the body, your body starts feasting off of that. So you're not starving. There's a big difference between fasting and starvation, okay? If your body's trained properly as a fat burner, um, your body will utilize what's hanging out on the outside, old gunk that's in the body that needs to be removed, okay? Or fat around the liver or things like that, things that we cannot see, the fat stores that are stored in our insides, okay? So People, please understand what fasting is, and it should be done for health purposes. So, so I talk to a lot of people, gut problems, you know, this has really helped heal my gut problems, my arthritis, aka arthritis, inflammation in the body. Um, I take a couple supplements to help with inflammation on top of eating a very clean diet. That's very important. When I hear, when I talk to women and say, oh my gosh, I'm having hot flashes at night, you have no idea what they're like. Well, I do. Around my cycle, I actually experience severe hot flashes. So I can't imagine if I wasn't eating clean what those hot flashes would feel like throughout the day. Typically, women that are having severe hot flashes throughout the month, up, up into their 50s and 60s, it's because you're eating tons of sugar, processed food, you're drinking wine before you go to bed. There's a lot of things going on. 
Okay, it's not just hormonal. Quit blaming your hormones. Yes, they play a part, but it's not the whole picture. People like to blame things. They want a diagnosis for this and for that. There's a lot more to the picture, people, and the more I do this and the more I get into it, the more I'm learning, the more I'm understanding, especially for my own personal self. So yes, some people say, don't tell people you're fasting. I like to tell people because if you have questions, you can do your research, um, but please don't worry about me. I'm not gonna do anything that's unhealthy for myself, okay? I'm not. I, there's a choice in why I'm doing it. There's a reason why I do what I do. There's a reason why I eat the way I eat. eat. And for most standard people that are drinkers and cheeseburger eaters and fried food eaters, they cannot wrap their head around not eating for eight hours sometimes, 10 hours. They're like, holy crap, I can't, I can't imagine not sticking something in my mouth. You know, when I go into social um, situations, I'm just, I, f I fast. I'm fat adapted. So I have no problem going in where there's salads and cookies and cakes and candies and junk. And I'm like, I have no interest in that. I'm not hungry. It's not tempting. Now, if you're a sugar burner, that's a completely different story. If you're a sugar burner and you try to fast, it's not impossible, but it makes it more challenging. Okay. Because when you're a sugar burner and you're constantly eating sugar, fruit sugar, processed sugar, cookies, candies, cakes, you're constantly spiking that blood glucose, okay? That's gonna keep you constantly wanting more and more food and you keep doing that blood glucose, Goku, blood glucose spiking throughout the entire day. That's why you start storing fat, okay? That's why middle-aged women are like, I can't, why can't I? Especially if they're working out hard or something. Well, what are you eating? How often are you eating? Okay, all I've had today, I fasted, I think it was 19 hours today. And again, I'm still doing some blood glucose um, testing. I'm, a, I'm not a complete nerd on it, but I just like the numbers sometimes just to see. Did the fatty green drink today. Twice this week, it brought the blood glucose down. This time it brought it up. So, hmm, a little stress on top of that. I'll test it here after I'm done doing this video. It'll be two hours. The one hour post test today went up mm, eight, 10 points, which isn't terrible. But that same exact green, dr fatty green powder drink two, yesterday and the day before brought the blood glucose down after two hours. So I'm gonna do some yoga, gentle, because I'm going to bang it out tomorrow and kill it in class. And I'm gonna kill it Monday morning and I'm gonna kill it Monday evening. So that's three classes that I'll be teaching. I physically have to participate in. So I need to take it easy today, take it easy on Sunday, um, feel the body, rest, stretch. Um, so fasting is the other F word. It's my other favorite F word. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I love you guys. Um, thank you for the concern. Um, my weight is still pretty much the same within like three to five pounds, give or take. Now remember, if you're fasting, of course you're going to lose weight, especially if you do an extended fast. That's because you have no food matter or anything in your body holding on to glycogen stores. Um, I'll find out if I'm able to make it through a three or five day fast. I'm curious how much weight I might lose. Again, it's not for weight loss, it's to get that autophagy, to get that cellul cellular regeneration, to get the body to feed off all the gunk, and so we can regenerate or rebuild and renew the body, not just on the outside, but as well in the inside, okay? Because our bodies regenerate skin and hair and nails and tooth and organs and things like that. And you are what you eat. You literally are what you eat. Um, you can look up to see how often those particular organs and things like that, um, how, how often they regenerate. And it, sometimes it's weeks, it's months, sometimes it's a year. So you literally are what you eat. So a year ago, you're probably completely different. Unless you're eating the same protocol that you were a year ago that you are now, then you're pretty much the same. But if you've changed things, then it's completely different. So no worries. Fasting is amazing. Amazing. Okay. Um, like I said, I haven't had any solid food, but the liquid nutrition I had was green powder. Uh, a couple different scoops of the green powder post my pre-workout plant-based pre-workout which i don't do for pre-workout i take it as a part of my breakfast two tablespoons of mct oil ap uh, not apple cider vinegar i always say that coconut vinegar and i had that a couple hours ago i'm gonna test my blood glucose before i do yoga it might go up because i'm jacked i'm talking to you so it it may go up 
It may come down. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I may have a dinner here after that. D again, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it's a little different for me. I usually try to eat a little bit earlier in the day to get my body a really long time to, um, to digest, okay? So if I have a salad meal, I have some nuts and make a really good fatty salad, and then it's nice. I may even go for a walk. I, I you know, at Liam's with his dad this weekend. So, yeah, big sigh, guys. Fasting is amazing, please. If anything, for like a month, 12 to 14 hours, quit eating at a certain time at night as much as possible. Quit making excuses for social events. That's the other thing is stopping eating be at least three hours before bed. That is a thing, people. I've seen it with clients and friends and family members. Oh, it's not a thing. This person says that. No, try it for yourself. You need to quit eating three hours before you go to bed, especially if you're a female and especially if you're having insomnia and especially if you're having hot flashes and hormonal problems. Try it, please. Um, and you sleep better, most definitely. And then when you wake up, if you want, have your coffee. Black is best. But if you remember, if you put anything in that coffee, heavy whipping cream, coconut oil, butter, whatever it is, milk and dairy, not an option. Um, like low fat creamers, those are the worst things for you. If you're gonna put anything in your coffee, heavy whipping cream, real butter, pasture raised, again, make sure the heavy whipping cream is very good. Um, you could put butter, coconut oil, cacao butter, MCTO, which is called like a, just a fatty coffee. No sugars, no sweeteners, and then maybe wait an hour or two or three and then break your fast okay try it again questions or comments please leave them below um and give it a whirl i challenge you can you go 12 or 14 hours without any food just drinking water and salt black coffee maybe herbal tea nothing in it no sweetener no fruit teas though we don't want fruit teas black tea green tea like an herbal tea that's not going to have any sweeteners in it can you that's the question can you do it can you go without food for 14 hours from the time you go from your last meal the night before till the next day? Can you do it? That's my question. Do you want to heal? Do you want to feel better? Do you want to lose some weight? Do you want to sleep better? Can you do it? That's my question. That's my challenge to you. Intermittent fast. Do it for a month. Tell me you don't feel incredible once you start transitioning. Eating more fat, dropping the glucose down. Make a choice. If you're not feeling good and you're not living optimally and you're not feeling optimally every single day, yeah, we all have rough days. But if you're not having more good days than, than you are having bad days, I don't know, check it out, people. See what's going on. Why, why are you feeling like shit all the time? Why can't you lose weight? Why is it such a struggle? You shouldn't have to beat yourself up. I barely work out right now, guys. Again, I'm going to try and change my protocol, but I barely work out. And I think I look fairly decent for 41 without working out, without beating myself into the ground, without doing a tons, of, tons and tons and tons of cardio, okay? It's nutrition. It's about the right kind of foods, the quality of your foods, vitamins, minerals, nutrients. Peace! Have a good Friday, guys. I'm out.